One of the world's largest crypto exchanges is announcing a big partnership today. FTX making a strategic investment in securities exchange IEX. The size of that investment has not been disclosed, but we've got Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX founder and CEO, joining us alongside Brad Katsuyama. He's IEX co-founder and CEO. Sam and Brad, it is great to have both of you on today. A big partnership. And Sam, we saw the release go out framed as this partnership helping to shape market structure for digital assets. Um, talk to me about how this partnership came about and how you see it uh, moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I think that the core thesis of it is, first of all, you know, we are experts in digital asset market structure. Uh, and IEX is, you know, are our experts in securities market structure. And so together, you know, we're excited to try to you know, tackle uh, digital asset securities market structure. And, you know, the, the other side of this is um, they are, you know, the most innovative of the securities exchanges. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited to try and break new ground with them. I mean, who doesn't love a little bit of market structure here? Let me bring in Brad on this conversation. Why the partnership on your end? We know that you have made a name of IEX off of the uh, need for investor protection using speed bumps to kind of level the playing field. Do you feel those types of things are needed in the crypto digital asset space? Yeah, I don't think uh, a speed bump in particular is needed. Uh, you know, it was purpose built for uh, for equities. I think here what, what we have is uh, the opportunity where market structure uh, and regulation are being shaped. Um, you know, from our perspective, we think that uh, we have a, you know, a, a bunch of institutional investors who are interested in getting involved in this space. Um, we wanted to get involved ourselves and, and we needed a partner to really do that. And, you know, FTX stood out. Um, Sam, from the beginning, has talked about regulation and, and the importance of, of scaling uh, the industry, helping it reach its potential. And, and from our perspective, uh, you know, very excited about the partnership and, and really looking to, to help kind of build that bridge between the industry and, and the regulators, much in the same way we've done in equities, where we've innovate, innovated inside of a very regulated industry. Um, and that, that creates a, a partnership with the regulators that we hope to, to bring to this, uh, to this asset as well. Uh, Sam, let me turn back to you. I mean, it's a very interesting time for the exchanges. Uh, SEC Chair Gary Gensler speaking yesterday, talking about the idea of wanting to segregate some crypto trading platforms from market making. How does FTX view that stance from the SEC? And how do you view that within the evolution of what you want FTX to be five, 10 years from now? Yeah, so I mean, I think that when you talk about separating market making from the exchange functionality, I think that's a pretty difference between something like a single dealer platform and something like an agnostic, um, you know, equitable order book. And I, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm sort of like a, a, a radical on this or, 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 or a purist, but I, in general, I think that there are a lot of things to be said for having, you know, truly agnostic, uh, you know, markets technology that isn't directly related um, to, to dealers. I mean, on that front, Sam, yesterday we did um, hear from Gary Gensler in those same comments where he said there's no reason to treat the crypto market differently just because they're using different technology. Is it as really as simple as that? You know, applying the regulation that's set aside for the equity space in crypto, are they inherently different? So I think the same principles apply. Right. When you look at the principles of customer protection, the principles of transparency, right, disclosures, anti-fraud, anti-market manipulation, anti-financial crimes, all of those poured over very directly to the digital asset ecosystem. And there's no reason that you need totally different principles for this. That being said, obviously, some of the details are a little bit different. Right. When you talk about, for instance, you know, registration of, of assets, right, instead of talking about who's the board of directors. Of this blockchain because usually the answer is there is none right you, you might talk about what is the on-chain governance mechanism of this blockchain and, and, and so again it's the same principles um but 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 i i think that like you know you you have to go through some details uh which are different in terms of implementation brad you've also weighed in on the regulatory front saying you know it's really important to get the regulation right so you have a well-defined crypto market structure and you've talked about at least in the securities the equity side before about the need for fairness when you look look at how crypto's traded today how the exchanges operate um, do you think the playing field is leveled 
Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, the exchanges, I think FTX in particular, you know, I'm a, I'm a client and user of FTX, uh, have done a great job from an investor uh, perspective. And I think, you know, as Sam said, there are parts of, uh, of the equities market, let's say, as a regulated market that we think uh, port over to digital assets. And I think there's certain parts of the equity market structure you don't want to replicate. Um, and from that perspective, I think there's there's a lot of value that could be added in our firms working together. And uh, we're excited. You know, we're at the start of this journey. Um, there's a lot to be discussed on the regulatory front. And I think that you know we're we're excited to to engage in these conversations and have this ongoing conversation with the industry and with regulators as well. Uh, Sam, I want to ask you a, a broad question here, and, and let me know if I get a little bit lost in the sauce, but market consolidation seems to be one uh, issue that not just Gary Gensler, but everyone in the crypto community is flagging, right? You have some people wanting to plant the flag and say, we want to be the largest holder in X currency or Y currency. In some cases, some people want to be the biggest holder in Bitcoin, for example. When you think about your role as a crypto tra uh, trading platform, how do you De kind of delineate what's the difference between decentralization and then too much market concentration? So, you know, I think there are a lot of tricky questions here, but at its core, the way I think about this is from the perspective of consumer choice, right? Is from the perspective of you want to have a competitive environment where there are multiple options available to users and they can choose the one that they want. And I sort of view it as, you know, the goal isn't to particularly enforce or to particularly attempt to stop, you know, some amount of, of market concentration. I, I, I think that the goal is let the market figure. Yeah, I asked that question just because, again, I mean, it's hard to tell exactly. I mean, you know, you can't put a hard number on exactly what the market cap is today because it's not going to be relevant tomorrow. But it just seems to be interesting because if there is going to be one or two people holding the large majority of a given cryptocurrency, the price action and the uh, liquidity is very much different. And I imagine that as a uh, trading platform, you want to have your ear to the ground on those types of things. So I just didn't know if there was anything that was kind of oh, interesting in terms of trends there. Totally. And, and, and I think that, you know, that's actually pretty similar, I think, to what happens when you look at startups, right? When a startup lists, you know, sometimes uh, the, you know, the core team owns 5% of the equity of the company. And sometimes they own 75% of the equity of the company, right? And, and I think that, that that, you know, frankly, does have pretty large impact on what the market is like for it, for, you know, for, 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 for that stock. I, I think that you see really different dynamics happening. I think that in the end, people tend to think that markets are healthier when there's more diversification of, you know, who the holders are of it. But I think an important counterpoint to that that really does matter is you want the people who own the, you know, who have who have a stake in something to be the ones who are impacting it, to have alignment between the people who are pushing something forward and the people who have exposure to it in order to incentivize great products. Uh, Sam, moving away from FTX specifically, a, a more personal question for you. There was a really interesting profile I found on Bloomberg about you specifically that ran just a few days ago, talking about this notion of effective altruism, essentially saying that you were in on crypto to make money so you could give it away. It, you know, when you think about that specifically, I'm just curious what the end game is for you. If it is about giving that wealth away, at what point have you made enough? It's a really good question. And I think this is really fundamentally important for how I think about what I do in my life, right? When you think about yourself personally, about spending money on yourself, how much can you spend usefully on yourself, right? You can buy nice food. You're talking about hundreds of thousands a year, right? You can get to millions a year with like fancy things, but like after the tenth car, it's not clear what you're doing, right? Like it, it's it's hard to spend more than millions a year in, in like an effective way on yourself, even if you really wanted to. Um, and and I think that's why we see super yachts because a lot of people literally can't figure out anything else to do with their money. When you take a step back and think about it from altruistic perspective, from a donation perspective, right? It would take billions a year just to eradicate a single. I, uh, you know, a single sort of neglected tropical disease. And there's a lot of them. And that's only talking about global health uh, in terms of existing, you know, uh, diseases that are spreading. And, 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 you know, you can look at like, what's the scale of like the US government budget each year? 
The answer is, you know, trillions, right? And, and, and so when you're talking about having impact on the world, I, I think that, you know, the point at which there's like nothing more to do with, with resources to help make the world better, I, I think you're talking about pretty big numbers. I think at least tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions and, you know, maybe trillions. I mean, there's no secret, Sam. I mean, you know, the crypto space growing so quickly, that's one reason why why you have amassed such a large business yourself. I guess I'm wondering, do you feel that there's a stigma issue in the crypto community? Because there's a stereotype perhaps perpetuated by memes that these crypto people are just, you know, get rich quick types of schemes. I just want to buy as many Lamborghinis and yachts as I possibly can off of the money I made off of X, you know, digital asset. How do you feel like you're trying to address that? There's absolutely some of that, and I think it's not super healthy for the space. Um, but I think it's worth putting it in context, right? In every industry that you look at, a lot of people are there to maximize the amount of money that they make. That's what they're doing. And you know, the same is true in crypto. Now, the fact that there has been so much wealth generation over the last couple of years in crypto means that that really gets highlighted in the ecosystem. But I don't think that the, the people in the ecosystem are fundamentally different from other ecosystems. And I think that as the you know volatility of, of, of the assets calm down a little bit, I think that we're going to see a healthier relationship between uh, you know money and and people in the crypto ecosystem.